Hi, everybody. I'm here today with Maureen Hancock, who is a psychic extraordinaire. And uh, I've interviewed her at Gaia, and she's just an amazing woman, very, very grounded with her psychic skills. And the reason we wanted to talk today is to look at what's happening in the mass consciousness, the kinds of problems people are facing and bringing to her right now, and the information coming from the other side in response to that. So let's go to... Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Welcome. First time I've had you on reginameredith.com. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I love it. I love your Bostonian accent, your Irish, uh, I guess, Irish Catholic Bostonian. Wow. It's awesome. <laughs> you Absolutely awesome. So first, Maureen, I wanted to jump into the prevalence of some of what you're seeing right now. Now, this part's a little sad, everybody. I mean, it's tough, but I think you've noticed this going on around you. And we're going to work our way to kind of the more empowering messages coming through. But one of the tragic things of these times is people are feeling so lost that a lot more people than ever are committing suicide. And I would like you to really kind of take off with how that's showing up with you, your work, the people around me speaking to the other side and what this phenomena is all about. So the last two years have been so overwhelming for everybody, really. And with all the shifts and changes and loss grief. And I'm just noticing in my connections, when I do events, or I'm speaking with parents who've lost children, there are just droves unaliving themselves, leaving this earth. And because they just feel not only, and I can't speak for exactly how everyone feels, but the masses are telling me that, oh, my child was overwhelmed, my husband, my sister, and just that they didn't maybe have the tools after two years of being so confined. And now, and I feel like it's like that dark night of the soul where people are now searching and really taking a look at their life, their journey, their purpose. And for some, yes, there's mental illness untreated and that they just don't know what to do with this. And uh, for others, it's just, I can't take this anymore. And we've all been there. We're just like at our wits end and the the services are not available like they used to be. So there's a lot sort of tying into this. So Maureen, when we're looking at it, you also speak to people once they do pass over to the other side. And what are you hearing from their perspective of why they've taken their lives? What are they telling you? I love that question. And what they're telling me is I just, you know, I couldn't take this anymore. Um, I wish I could hit rewind because the minute that they leave this earth and they're in the higher side of life, oftentimes they're looking down and it's like, oh, I wish that I reached out for help. I wish that I, you know, had the tools and I am so, so sorry. They want to say sorry to their loved ones, their parents and everyone around them, but they can see more clearly when they come out of the physical, but they also tell me they're kind of in a holding pattern where they have to do a life review and look at where they didn't reach out for help, where things were overwhelming and where they maybe could have gotten, you know, better services or understood why they felt so lost and right. alone and afraid. And I think we we're all feeling that now a little bit lost and alone. This is a really good cautionary tale, Maureen, because <clears throat> if we can hear what they're trying to tell you from the other side, maybe each one of us knows somebody who's in a fragile state and we can start dialing in and watching more closely and trying to extend ourselves beyond our own isolation or discomfort to others who are in more fragile positions, hopefully to be able to get, you know, lend enough of a hand to keep them from choosing to end their lives. I mean, yeah. how would you say that? Yeah, definitely. Because I think the overall message from uh, the spirits that have crossed themselves over is I wish that I stayed the course I wish that I hung on because like yin and yang, we're constantly changing the energy and circumstances around us. And in this moment of, I can't see past this and I'm leaving. And what they say to me is, I wish I was still here 
And of course, they'll say I'm at peace, but they have to sit in the pain that they cause those here because folks have said to me, oh, if it's so great on the other side, why don't we just all go there? And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like there's sort of a, a set of things that we need to accomplish here and learn and grow and forgive and release and find that space to our purpose, our true soul's purpose. And with that often comes the dark night of the soul where you feel like you're teetering between here and there. And I know so many of us, myself included, that I am like, sometimes I feel like I don't belong here and I want to go home wherever that may be. And maybe that is, you know, interplanetary or it is, you know, heaven, the other side, whatever you want to call it. But that longing in that empty space within of, I feel so alone and isolated, but they always say to me, I wish I hung on to yeah. see, to see the progression and to find uh, the awakening. So it would seem then that our task in um, choosing to incarnate during these times, uh, you can't force a soul into a body. If we're here, some part of us chose to be here at this time, then it has to be that our task is to find the highest, the most beautiful or sublime in any way we can aspect of self to reach up into during these times. So what would you say to that when people are feeling overwhelmed and they're feeling this darkness, they can't really relate to that beautiful light filled aspect of self? What would you tell them? Oh, I love that, Regina, the way that you just put that because I have chills and that is what I'm hearing. Like I just couldn't see past and and some have mental illness. And so it's not going to be, you know, easier said than done that we just need to do the work. It's about having services available or reaching out or realizing that your path contract, your agreements were to come into this incarnation with these challenges, with mental illness or with feeling lost alone, or you're going to be in a pandemic and, you know, you're going to face the ultimate, you know, goal, you know, sort of like lessons and whatnot. And if you can only hear the whispers of your soul of hang on because this too shall pass and everything changes day to day, just like our energy and our, our patterns within physical right? The mind is going to change as well. And those thoughts that are constant. I actually just helped a friend of mine who was this close to leaving here. And yesterday she said, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart because I was in a dark place and I wanted to leave. And I'm so glad I stuck around and I'm starting to already see within days why I, I needed to stay the course. That's beautiful. Oh my God. Uh, thank you for sharing that. You know, it seems to me that when all seems lost, one of the things we can tap into, but we don't really, we kind of walk by it and don't give it a lot of credit. And that is um, beauty. And I mean, in any form, a smile, um, a beautiful sunrise, a beautiful tree or flower or a baby passing by holding a baby. It seems to me that beauty, because it's of such a high vibration, all of these things are of such a high vibration might be a path for any one of us suffering from this darkness that it's just a frequency that our cosmos is bathed in right now. It's a transition frequency and it's chaotic and it's hard, but beauty still exists all around us. We just can't see it when we're feeling that weighted down. What are, would be some of the mechanisms you would say to help people connect with those higher frequencies so they can, even if it's just hanging on by the fingernails, hang in here? Well, part of it is uh, reaching out, reaching out like my friend did to me. And she said, I almost didn't reach out to you and I was just yeah. going to do it and leave and just reaching out so that somebody can hear you. Like they want to be heard. They want to be held. They want to be cared for and understood and getting out in nature, I think is, is one of the key things finding that vibration. Like you said, like every day I have anxiety. I have a lot of events where I'm dealing with death on a daily basis. And every single day I take my dogs, I go to a conservation land, I get in the woods. The minute I get on the path, I, I can breathe, I can breathe again. And so it's baby steps. 
seek out counseling, of course, and reach out to somebody that is trained. If it is a, a, ma a matter of mental illness, like you may need medication, you may, may need help, or you can find that um, there's a natural antidepressant in digging in the earth and planting your, your own garden and sowing your own seeds. And I know that sounds so corny, but when you take a little bit of control back, when you feel out of control, you can find joy in playing maybe an instrument in the vibration of the music or learning how to meditate, but get outside because that's where you're going to even feel supported by uh, the heavens above where you can get a sign. Maybe you see a hawk or a cardinal or a dragonfly, butterfly. And then the peace of the forest. I don't know about you, but it just moves me. Oh, I'm a big forest person. Yes. Oh, so I literally feel the trees taking my anxiety. And um, and this is corny, but it's true. I I hugged a tree yesterday because I was so anxious. And oh, I I'm a big tree hugger. I'm with you. I do it all the time. <laughs> I love and, trees. <laughs> and this is so silly. I thought it was like, I'm like, oh, that's just a saying or whatever. I am hugging the tree. But I was literally <laughs> like, help me. <laughs> hugging the tree. And it felt so good. And I felt like the tree, which, you know, has a heartbeat was taking away my anxiety in the moment. And there's also a lot of natural things that you can do and change your, your uh, eating habits as well, because sugar is going to bring more of that anxiety and gut health, I think ties so much into, um, you know, brain health and your feelings, um, anxiety, depression, and whatnot. So taking a look at the whole mind, body, and soul connection, I often will tell my clients, like, let's try to change your diet. Let's cut out dairy, gluten, sugar, anything anti-inflammatory that's going to add to these feelings of despair. I love chocolate, but if I have a chocolate fest at night, I'm up all night. I don't do well with caffeine and I'm very anxious. I love the sugar but it raises your glycemic index. And then also in comes the anxiety. So taking a look at that, I try to do ashwagandha. I do holy basil. These are some calming herbs that, that work for me, the chamomile tea, uh, valerian root. So there are things out there that you can start to change the flow of energy in the body, acupuncture, shiatsu. I'm a shiatsu practitioner. I studied Chinese medicine. There are so many tools that you can work on the flow of energy in the body because if you have deficiencies in the flow or excesses, rah, the lion comes out or you feel really, really exhausted and tired. And aren't we all feeling so exhausted right now? Anyway. Everyone. In fact, my friend in Sedona, and, and not in Sedona, but in Boulder, um, the makeup artist, you met Suzanne. Suzanne and I were talking last week when I was still at Boulder doing my shows and mm -hmm. said, what is up? It feels like it's an effort to carry our faces around. Our faces feel so heavy. Our legs feel heavy. And then my husband Zeus was saying, God, I don't know what's wrong. All I want to do is sleep. Everything just feels so heavy. So this is what you're hearing from everywhere, I assume. And he, my husband was talking to all of the people in his community. They're all feeling heavy. This is not have, something specific to the individual anymore. It's true. This is definitely on, uh, you know, this mass basis of like everybody. And I also noticed, and maybe you did too, with these most recent eclipses, the yes. solar flares, I think the solar flares are always going to be with us. And, but right now we had um, the two eclipses in a row and this, that, latest full moon and we really are affected by the cycles of the moon the solar flares and you know all the other stuff out there even the 5g on your phone and just a fun fact for folks do not sleep with your phone near you either have it you know 20 feet away have it away from you, especially 5G. It's changing the energetic makeup in your body and the flow of energy in the body. Certainly try not to have it on your body 
as, as much as you can. So that's an unplug, not only unplug, get out in nature, but if you have plugs on, you have your TV on, you have all kinds of, uh, you know, activity around you, that's changing the energetic makeup and it's going to make you tired. It's going to zap your energy. Uh, I love a good bio mat. I like to just get out in the grass. And I love hurt. my bio mat too. I also Dude, have I'll one. Just yeah. sit, I'll just sit in the root chakra, the base of the spine on my mat or right, right in the, uh, the grass outside. And I just sit and I'm grounding and getting rid of all the electromagnetics around me and the microwaves, everything. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's easy because we live out in the country. We can turn our Wi-Fi, turn everything off. Um, however, if you live in an apartment complex in a really densely populated area, it's just so hard to get away from any of these signals, the Wi-Fi signals. So you have to take extra precautions, such as the ones you were talking about, just to kind of get it back to, to normal. So a couple of questions. I, I want to go into the whole notion of you, what you were talking about, this incredible heaviness and lack of motivation humanity is going through. And we'll talk about dopamine cycles in a minute. But I want to ask you. Here you are, you go to these live events that have hundreds of people there. Everyone just me, me, me. They want to find out who's talking to them from the other side or what's going on inside them. This is a tremendous drawdown, I would think, on your energy. And I mean, well, like you said, it, it, it creates a lot of anxiety. Can you talk about the phenomena of people being so needy from the position you're in? Mm. So, and the groups I present to are anywhere from 150 to 500 people three times a week. And I ask everybody in the beginning, how many are new to seeing a medium? And three quarters of my audiences now are raising their hand where before I had repeat customers, you know, that would kind of have a little bit of medium addiction, which uh, we can talk about, but getting back to the groups, especially in the last two years, my audience is a very low energy, like we talked about. I am known as the comedian medium. So I try to amp up the energy, raise the vibration. So it's a celebration of life and memories and they're laughing, crying, and just being able to feel again. But so many did not get to say goodbye in the last two years, not just from COVID, but their loved ones in a facility couldn't go in. You had to do it through a phone or an iPad. And I know so many of you can relate. I can feel it. And so the sadness and that not having closure, which I don't love that word, but being able to say goodbye. So when I look out in the audiences, I'm like, this is heavy. And I do try to bring the lightness. And I had an event last night and I, I literally said, what's wrong with you all? You know, like, look alive, people. I have enough to do here. And so <laughs> just trying to get them to, to relax and raise the vibration. So we work as a team. So I need my sitters to have at least a, a high enough vibration that we can raise it. And I get the loved ones on the other side to lower theirs. So we meet in the middle. So this is our loved ones in spirit, the higher side of life. They're a helicopter propeller and we are a ceiling fan. Mm, you know, and like what's going to get our fan moving and try to give us more energy is, is key. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying this video because if you are, there are dozens more like it on my site, all supported by people like you. So if you'd like to keep this work rolling in and join our community, just click on the Patreon button at reginameredith.com. That also gives you access to insider commentary, my live book club and other live events with special guests. So join in. Thanks. Okay, so that kind of feeds right into the story of dopamine. And recently I watched a little video. I, I love well done little videos, um, such as the after school. Do you know the after school videos after S K O O L? It's it's they're fabulous. They're the kind where you have a narrator and then you have someone drawing the pictures as the narrator speaking. It's that oh, kind yes. of video. Okay. Yes, it's those. And they're in some really complex subjects, brain chemistry, it can be uh, the nature of good and evil, it can be any subject with different lectures. 
But there was one on dopamine production that was fascinating because it was showing what happens when people just consume in order to produce some dopamine. So it had someone lounging on the sofa, slouched down, you know, suck down a, a, you know, a massive Starbucks drink, throw down a few cookies or chips with it. You have the tube on in front of you and just sitting passively consuming, which gets your, can get your dopamine cranked up a little bit. And, you know, if it's a lot of carbs, your serotonin up a bit. And that's what a lot of people resorted to in the last couple of years. But it was saying it's not those substances that are actually doing it and certainly not in any significant way. It's the effort we go through in life to move towards something, to desire something, to uh, go on a little walk um, or do something, learn something new. For example, reach out to someone, put some effort into life. It's the actual desire and effort we put into life that once that's accomplished, that's where we get the dopamine relief release. That's what we've been missing. People are sitting there with a complete lack of motivation. Now we have to, we have the opportunity, and you can speak to what people are saying from the other side, but we absolutely must find a way to start reinventing ourselves, stepping out, learning new things, and have natural dopamine production, in which case suicidal thoughts don't exist in the presence of that. Can you talk about that for a moment? I feel like that ties right into the huge awakening right now. And with everything uh, that's that we've gone through in the last couple of years, yes, myself included, I put on 15 pounds and I, I just stayed in the house. I was on Zoom like this with folks because all my stages were shut down and my yoga studio was shut down. I stopped doing yoga. I tried at home and I, I just couldn't feel the same energy. I need to be right in person with somebody. So I've also noticed a lot of my connections are men between like 40 and 60 heart attacks, you know, releasing so much cortisol, stress hormones, not getting the dopamine, the serotonin, and those natural relaxation uh, hormones that we need. And with the shift, I'm notice, noticing too, I tell people like, can you step outside of yourself for a minute and look in and see like, what can you, what do you want to change or what feels good to you? And so many are saying, well, I'm going for walks. I'm getting out in nature. I'm playing the ukulele. I started art projects again. I am recreating or getting back in touch with people and relationships. And then others are saying, and I'm releasing relationships that don't serve me that kept me hanging on the couch and just eating. And, and my son who has been in his room for two years in college and his room on here, um, a, a few years ago, he was diagnosed with uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So he's not very active. It went to stage four. He was going to need a liver transplant um, or he would end up with liver cancer. I said, flat out. I'm like, do you want to die? Because you, you're going to leave this earth. And, and I had to be tough with him. So he started going to the gym, working out, getting back with friends. We'd go on, you know, we love Martha's Vineyard. I'm over near there now. And that's where we find and source our dopamine and our serotonin. And so, yeah, it's so important, Regina, for folks to make changes and get off the couch. It is. Inertia is a real deal you know, and it, you can get caught up of it and, and have a very hard time getting that engine rolling again. And right now, I think that's where we are. You're either going to get your engine rolling again, step out, do things that are strange, uncomfortable, new, just get out and do something, or we're going to fall into that abyss. And that abyss can bring a huge amount of depression with it. And I'm also seeing people that used to say ne yes to life, saying no more to life, really kind yeah. of shutting down. Definitely. And even so my son now, thankfully, is stage one. So they want to do a study at Children's Hospital in Boston. They want to study what he did to turn it around because they've never seen such in eight months. He turned it around. And so they want to study him. And I want to talk. He also did a lot of supplements, natural things. And uh, we did a lot of liver cleanses and artichoke car and dandelion root and things like that. But with my husband, he now has type two diabetes, like, or he's right on the border. And well, that's, that's an epidemic though, from people right. being secluded and eating a lot of carbs and just coping. That's an epidemic. And like you said, saying no to life, 
I do feel though that people are ready to say yes. I'm yes. heading to the top of a mountain in Costa Rica tomorrow, and it's called the Soul Shift Retreat, and it's about shifting and resetting your soul. So it's possible for everybody if you so choose to to take it, you know, take your power back. Don't you think? I do think so. And this is also another touchy part of this subject, which is you can reach a handout to those you care for and love, and you can do what you can to support them. But I think at this time when things are this fragile, that people can't allow themselves to be pulled down under with others. Um, I think that's a really big one. And that has caused a real rift in relationships, a necessary rift in a lot of relationships, actually. So I'd like you to talk about what's happening with all your clients, all your people in your audiences, and so forth on relationships, because they're changing. This is a big one. And myself included, I have some dear friends that I had to release. And maybe it's just for the time being. But I do notice that people are getting caught up in their ego and ego is everything. It's all around us. And I've had to make some changes, boundaries, boundaries, my biggest lesson in this lifetime, because I'm a people pleaser. I want to take care of everybody. I want everyone to be happy at my expense. So I heard this saying that I've it has stuck with me for years. It's okay to disappoint another, to be true to yourself. And I think that's really important with the disease to please, like Oprah says, and uh, just relationships that you're noticing that they don't fit anymore. Uh, maybe you'll come back to them, but sometimes it's like, I need to release you so that I can find me so that I can find what works for me. And some of my friends where this has happened with us are like, you know, you don't hear me or you don't, I'm like, I am showing up the best I can in this moment based on what I am going through and what I need. And so then I, I had to release and I'm like, I can't do it for you. And if I'm disappointing you, then goodbye. <laughs> so, you know, so that I can, so that I can feel good. And it does all come back to love and forgiveness though. So I have to get in that place because my Irish gets up and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm all set. Uh, see you later. Uh, goodbye. If you don't like it, leave. <laughs> so, but my true higher self is like, I love you. I miss you. I wish this could be better, but I need to work on me. And people are working in more creative ways on their intimate relationships and very deeply personal relationships. People are having to get creative and say, you know what, maybe that model just isn't working for us. Someone's winning, someone's losing. How can everybody win here? That's a whole new question is going from just surviving to thriving. So let's talk about what that looks like. And some of the people you've seen, some of the clients and what's happening with some of the relationships so that people can thrive again. Even if it's unconventional, especially with loss. And I work a lot with parents who have lost children physically. And they all say to me, I no longer be, want to be with my partner, or they start drinking, or, you, you know, finding that serotonin or that that little piece of them that's going to help them survive. And so many couples break up after the loss of a child and they change or they just can't do it for their partner anymore. Or it's the fighting begins. And even just without loss after the last two years, so many are quick to anger, short fuse, easily frustrated. I say that's liver excess in Chinese medicine. So you're going to take a look at that, that every, mostly everything affects the liver, the flow of energy in, in the liver. So taking a new look at how you can better come together. And I use my own situation as an example that during the pandemic, uh, we, we had some tight, close calls to see you later. And we found our way back to love and we communicate better. We communicate our needs and what, because the old me wasn't serving. And I would just, no, I don't want to hear it. And I could admit, I would think I was right. He would think he was right. And you have to find the, ready? Happy medium. <laughs> but if you're willing to do the work, I mean, we 
got some counseling, we got some help and we got some insight and coaching and, and really now I do like, um, in the legal field, I was litigation manager at Logan airport. So I held a lot of depositions and I'd always say to my clients before you answer, breathe and count to five and then give your answer because <laughs> your original is going to be the lion. Rah! But if you take a breath and you breathe, you might say, okay, this is how I'm going to phrase this because your first choice might be uh, not so healthy. <laughs> this is good in general, because as you say, there's so much pent up anger right now that people just shoot off what's coming out of their well, what's coming out of them, the anger coming off of them. So that's that's good advice, no matter what, if you have any kind of tense relations going in life. So what I'd like to talk about now are from both this side and the other side, your own higher self and others, what it means in these times regarding taking genuine leaps of faith to start giving birth, not only to our new selves, but to our new world. Right. And, and really taking a look at you, yourself, your patterns, what needs to change. And I, I say to my clients here, and I often hear from the other side, you know, I wish my shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I hear that a lot. I wish I wasn't like this. I wish I could have changed the alcoholism or how we, you know, our relationship failed. And there's a lot of that. And I say, let's do the work here so that I don't need to hear it from them saying, I'm sorry. And I wish I did things differently. Let's make a change. What does that look like? Step out of yourself, take a good, hard look at your patterns and where you keep repeating maybe the same types of relationships or responses that you have. And then finding this healthy relationship. I feel like when you really start to come out of the dark night of the soul that you want to be of service to others, but first you have to take care of you. So it's time for the healer to be healed in order for you to give and find your way back to love. And I know people listening because they say this to me all the time easier said than done. And then I snap back with, well, then do the work. What does that look like for you as an individual, as a fingerprint? Because everybody is different, but yet we all feel love, want love and come back to love. And that's what the other side always says. Like we are pure love. Here is earth school where you have the lessons that we hope that you will learn from and grow and reach a higher consciousness or enlightenment or get as close as you can. Because when you really start to realize like, wow, I agree to a lot of stuff in this lifetime, instead of woe is me, why does this keep happening? I get that a lot. And I'm like, what if you took a good look at why it's happening? Why do you think it's happening? Oh, because I'm supposed to learn about forgiveness or patience or, you know, just coming back to love. But when you come back to love, you come back to the self and then you can raise your consciousness and feel connected again to your purpose, your path and your lessons. And to also, I think that was so beautifully said. Thank you. I think also to understand that you are safe, you are surrounded with guidance and love and protection, multi-layers and dimensions of beings that are around us here to celebrate with us, to help us when we need help, and that it's okay to look at those dysfunctional or shadow aspects of self. Everybody's got them. And, you know, it's great when times are flying high, everybody can be wonderfully, deliciously distracted. But in these last few years, that's not the case. And so you can hide from those things when you're feeling fabulous. But when you're not, when you're not, when you're feeling vulnerable or alone, um, it might be a little more challenging to take that on. But I agree with you. If you can't take on why is this happening? You've got a lot of space around right now to look at why things are happening then you can't really move forward quite as easily. So I appreciate yeah. you saying that. I think people get stuck in that cycle yeah. and it becomes a cycle of energy that in Chinese medicine is, you, you know, you don't, you have adrenal exhaustion. So you're always taking from the kidney Jing energy. So you'll get low back pain and knee pain and crave 3 p.m. coffee, um, chocolate, some kind of a pick me up because, you know, you drop but your energy is dropping too. So people get stuck in that cycle of like, why, why? And I'm like, if you keep saying that and you can't step out of it instead of like, oh, I get it now. Okay. Even being stopped at every stoplight. Oh, 
awesome. And I'm in a hurry. It's like, <laughs> I say, breathe. And if you see me in the car, I do Kundalini breathing. So I'm like this. <gasps> <laughs> the comes, lion. <laughs> oh, it comes right from here. If you're doing a Kundalini breath, which, which is also a grief yoga breath to just reset, take a breath. You'll get there. We're always in such a hurry. People are beeping, honking, yelling. And you know what? I'm like, I don't know what their journey is like. I'm going to give them a break right now. Yeah. So, so far we've talked about the notion of going, understand, cutting ourselves some slack, looking at the why for, why are these things happening? Returning to love, returning to self-love, cutting other people some slack because we're all in this together and starting to find ways to touch back in with things that are motivating so we can lift our levels of genuine dopamine production so we don't have to sink in these depressions. So those are some really good takeaways. So as just a final thought of all of the most beautiful messages that come from the other side that they just wish they could inculcate into the living, what would you say is the most often uttered sentiment from the other side? Mm, I love that. So it is, it has shifted. And lately in the past year, since I've been getting back out on the stage, oftentimes say a mom and a dad come through or children or what, whatnot, they say like, we want you all to come back together and stick together because families do get broken up from loss and they're not speaking and people go their own way and they get stuck in the earthly lit stuff. And so it's always like, you know, come back to, to love and live this life and find joy through the grief, whatever that grief may be. It can be the job loss. It can be the past two years. That's a loss, right? And you go through those stages of grief, but everybody's different. And the main message is we want you to slide into home plate when it's your time to release and come home. And we just want you to, to forgive with all your heart, love with all your might, and, and really just finding purpose here, give back, recognize old habits need to change and start to create new healthy habits for the dopamine and really for the joy. So you're finding joy through whatever you're grieving, physical loss, uh, anything, the, the loss of the last two years. That's beautiful, Maureen. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we'll talk again. We have a lot more we can talk about, but I just wanted to do this for this critical period of changing time where things and structures are falling away. It sounds like what they're saying from the other side is let the institutions fail. Let things we don't need anymore go without being purchased. Let friendships, if they must, go. But as we can, it sounds like they're saying, try to still forgive and love one another and hold hands through this. Don't just break all bonds just because you're feeling a little bit lonely or in despair. Would that be accurate to say? Yes, that is absolutely accurate. And they say like, become almost like self-sustaining. Like, I feel like we're going back in time, like go back to what you, you learned or what I did and I'm 55. And so I'm planting my own garden and I'm decorating my own soul. And, you know, I have uh, self-sustaining abilities that I can go back to basics and not, I have to have the Audi. I have to go in and get all the toilet paper. And, you know, the hoarding thing is coming from fear. So the other big message is try not to come from a space of fear-based, you know, energy and come from a space of love and that you will be okay. We will be okay. And we can be better than that too. We can, we can find joy and be happy again. I agree. And I think as humanity goes, we are headed to a more beautiful place. No doubt about it, but it has to let the old die away like everything. <sighs> Waves of energy and consciousness. And we're in a cosmic wave right now that is to basically let things fall apart at the seams that aren't working anymore so we can rebuild from underneath that. So Maureen, you're absolutely delightful and just so grounded and so wise and you're really good at what you do. So I just wanted to honor you and thank you for taking the time out of your more than busy schedule to be with us today. Thank you for having me. And I feel the same. And I just love your energy and I just want to marinate in it. So thank you. <laughs> well, we have some mutual admiration going on. Thank you so much, Maureen. That was really lovely. And I think very helpful.
Thank you. Okay, everybody. Again, if you want to connect in with where Maureen is and what some of her, where her, some of her events are and when they are and so forth, you can go to MaureenHancock.com. Until next time, thank you for joining us here on ReginaMeredith.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you might also want to consider joining Patreon, which allows me to keep all of this content free and available to everyone. And if you're looking for like-minded souls, you might also enjoy my online community called Our Neighborhood. Links to join are in the description.